Welcome back to the Buffalo Stampede. I'm Voice of the Buffs, Mark Johnson, recapping 2017, all 17 sports here at the University of Colorado. We're doing two and one here right now. It's that kind of holiday deal. Mark Wetmore from uh, CU Cross Country, men's and women's. As we glance back to 2017, I know you and I have talked enough before. You felt good about your team. Maybe you didn't uh, hit some of the expectations or goals maybe you had, but kind of glance back on the season for us. First, thanks for following us throughout the season. You bet. We got more television coverage than ever before. <laughs> Cross-country runners and coaches aren't used to that. Uh, we had a good year by all uh, normal standards, but honestly, a couple of disappointments by ours. The men had a long streak of winning the uh, Pac-12 and were unable to defend it this year by a very narrow margin. But a win's a win and is a loss and a, a loss is a loss and so the men were second to Stanford the women won again uh, pretty happy with the Pac-12 NCAA as you know we uh, hoped to uh, finish a little higher than the third and the eighth that we had uh, the, I think the women ran well two better teams just outran us uh, the men weren't their best mm -hmm. it is interesting sometimes i remember talking with you and kind of looking back i believe it was the uh the ncaa tournament where the bus ran a better time in the nationals than they did in the regionals that were there and so sometimes it's tough to measure but the, the results don't quite turn out the way you expect them to in the in the case of the women if they go to the pre-nationals which is held five weeks before the nationals they run the same course six mm -hmm. kilometers on the same course the men unfortunately are not on comparable courses because it's a mile and a quarter difference in the case of the women they ran faster uh, at the ncaa than they did five weeks prior mm -hmm. uh, but it wasn't good enough yeah the Pac-12, uh, one of the better cross-country uh, conferences, of course, in the nation. For, for the women to win that, win that though, that, that's, that's a nice feather in the cap for the Buffaloes. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't remember it exactly, but we were third. I think Oregon was fourth and maybe Stanford was fifth in the NCAA championship. So the Pac-12 is probably, well, right now it's definitely the best cross-country uh, conference in the country. It's hard to win and it's hard to defend. Uh, and we'll see about next year. How about the year that Danny Jones had for the women's team? Danny had almost an excellent year. Uh, she didn't come to us as a heralded cross-country runner. She came to us as a middle distance runner, 800 and 1500 out of high school. She's been excellent at those distances. She's uh, won a conference champion, or two conference championships uh, at middle distances, but not known as a cross-country runner. So to throw her hat in the ring among the best in the country, uh, this year was a nice step for her. A little bit under the weather for the NCAA. Mm -hmm. It didn't cost her the win, but it probably cost her a couple of spots. Well, you're looking forward with the CU women's team. I mean, what, what are the losses? What are the expectations? How do you kind of view this team moving forward? Well, it's been a deep team for years. I'm learning, though, that uh, so are some other teams. Mm -hmm. So that it's our best team ever doesn't mean we win. We bring back a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Out of the uh, team that raced at the NCA uh, a month ago, we bring back uh, all the women but one. Mm -hmm. And then there's some good new young people working hard, one or two that were banged up this year that we could plug back in. It'll be a good team next year. All right, you also mentioned uh, the, the men's team and finishing uh, eighth in the NCAA championships. How do you kind of view that group moving forward? Our men's team for 2017 was not deep. And so when we had to sit out a very important athlete for our team, John Dressel, it was a big hit. It cost us 100 points at least at the NCAA championship. So he comes back, he's healthy, uh, everybody else is a year older. We lose some good people, but we have some um, really good emerging young people. Eduardo Herrera ended up our top finisher at the NCAA, and he's a redshirt freshman. So All right. another year. We'll be better. Do you generally find, I mean, when you look at uh, football, athletes become stronger as they get older. Is it a similar type of situation with, with runners in terms of their strength and how they compete? Maybe more so, yeah. A 19- or an 18-year-old distance runner cannot run with a 23- or a 24-year-old distance runner. So it's uncommon to break out a male freshman, and we did not. Eduardo is a redshirt freshman, so mm -hmm. he's had a year to get used to things. Anyway, yes, it's, that's a really good insight. Uh, age matters in distance running. 
And for the Colorado Buffaloes, the boy in cross country, the season really doesn't end. It seems like it's 12 months out of the year you folks are practicing and training. Yeah, the distance runners take a week and a half off, uh, start back up again. They're already running 12, 15 miles a day. They have indoor track, then they have outdoor track, and in some cases into the summer. So, no, there's there's no break for distance running. Well, it's just around the corner once again as we wrap up 2017. Looking at all 17 sports here at the University of Colorado, there's a glance with Mark Wetmore at men's and women's cross country.